In this video, we're going to create a new page and a nav bar that we can use to navigate between these pages. To do that, we'll use a SvelteKit layout, the page store, and lots of CSS. So let's start by making a new page. We'll want it to be in the My Monsters route. And there's nothing there right now, so to have something show up, we'll need a new file. And that new file will go into the My Monsters folder and then plus page dot svelte file within that folder. There we go. Now we want a way to be able to navigate back and forth between these two pages. We could do something like this where it'll just send you home in a link here. But this is super silly because not only does it not look good, it also is not scalable when we have a lot of pages. Instead, we need something that's consistent, and that is the nav bar. So let's use a layout to make this look consistent, and then once it's displaying everywhere, we'll make it look good. And so we'll create a new file, which is plus layout.svelte. And we'll just put a link in there for now. And notice it's made everything else disappear. That's because in a layout, you need to put in a slot. And the slot is where everything else goes that's not part of the layout. So in this case, it's the My Monsters header two. And on the home page, it's everything we've done in the home page. So let's go ahead and add a second link. And this will go to My Monsters. And there, we have the functionality for our nav bar. Now let's make it look good. We'll start by wrapping these in a div that has the nav bar class. And now that we have that, we can start defining that in the style section. So for nav bar, we will want display flex, but we want to justify the content to be a uh, space between. And so now we have my monsters on the right side. And then for the background color, we'll go ahead and make this not quite black, but yeah, a dark gray. And then for the text, we'll make it white. And then we will go ahead and put some padding in here. And you'll see the text is not quite white. That's because we will need to do it for links. And there we go. And now we'll put in some padding. Let's go ahead and make it 10 pixels. Good. So the next thing to fix is these underlines. So in our nav bar link, we'll have text decoration, none. Good, now no more underlines. And next, we'll want to fix this space right around here. So if we inspect it, we'll see that, that space is coming from the built-in body styling. And so we can override that. And it's not in here, but we can use global and then body and put a margin of zero. And now our nav bar is going all the way without that padding and margin. So now that we've got our nav bar working, is there anything else you want to do in this layout? Yes, there are a couple things. So first, we have this My Monsters running up against the edge here. And we could fix it in My Monsters, but we're probably going to want to prevent this behavior in all of our pages. So we can fix it in the layout. So we can put a class of container here and close that out. And then in the container, we can put a max width of, uh, well, let's do a max width of 90%. So it's never quite up against the edge. And then the margin, yes, will be auto. And then we'll go ahead for the extra wide screens, say the width is 1200 pixels. And that way, when you have it really large, here, let's go ahead and do this. It will automatically close up instead of spreading dozens of Pokemon wide. Next, we'll make these links look a little more interactive. So to start with, 
we will do a nav bar and when we are hovering over the link, we'll change the, well, let's do the color instead of the background color. So here we'll make the background color just a little bit darker. All right, so you can tell something's happening when you're hovering it. You can see that it's clickable. And next we'll go ahead and have an active class. So the nav bar, when the link is active, we will go ahead and give it a border. And we'll have it the same color as the hover. And here it'll look lighter and a border radius of four pixels. And let's go ahead and see how that looks. So we'll go ahead and add a class of active to my monsters. There are plenty other design choices you can make at this point. I'm not a designer. We're gonna go ahead and roll with this one and show the code needed to make it actually display active on the actual active route. So we'll go ahead and put in our script tag and here we're gonna import the page, we're gonna call path name later, from app slash stores. And what we're gonna do here is you might remember this from a couple episodes ago. We're going to say, all right, we're going to add the active class if this is true. So here we can just go ahead and do true and then we'll do false just to isolate that part of it. And there we go. So it's displaying the active class when this is true. And now we'll go ahead and actually do our expression, which is page.url path name. And so if it's equal to that, then home will be highlighted. And we'll copy this over and change the path name that is being tested against. So here it'll be my monsters. Cool. And so we can click and there we go. And there you have it. That is our nav bar. There is, of course, a lot of other stuff you can do with layouts, including loading layout data and having nested layouts. However, what we've shown here is the most common scenario, and you'll see a version of it in almost every app, at least at some point. So if you've enjoyed this, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time when we will finally see what stores are in SvelteKit. We've been using the page store for a while, but now we'll be able to create our own and share data across the app. I'll see you soon.